I've got Nico Collins as my faller. Uh, in this one, all right, so Stefan Diggs comes over. I know he's only under contract for a year. Yeah. So he could so he could be gone after the season. It could be a one and done, which wouldn't surprise me. Um he obviously didn't feel like he was being utilized there in Buffalo, so he wanted out. They obliged. Hope you know, I'm sure he's hoping with what he saw from this team last year that uh he can have another monster season and then parlay that into a you know another one last contract for him uh with another team that's my guess um but yeah for this year though nico collins it's it makes me sad and i know nick um nico and stefan diggs don't do the same things on the field mm. which i'm sure is going to be your argument here jake uh but <laughs> i as much as i i love this offense uh i i love stroud i love nico we still have Tank Dell on the team. Uh, you've got Dalton Schultz, who they re-signed, uh, which I know the tight end isn't like their big position, but he is a, a reliable target, and they re-signed him for a reason. So uh, they obviously want him to be a part of that offense as well. So there's a lot of mouths to feed, even though this is going to be a higher-powered offense. I mean, we saw a lot of firepower from it this last year. Um, I, I do think that Diggs digs into nico's production what uh, so and and especially with i i think this i have a little bit of my personal bias in here because i was super high on nico collins coming out of this last season um uh, and the fact that houston traded for another high-end wide receiver um just got me all shooketh so i mean <laughs> So for at least for this year, I'm out on Nico. Maybe dynasty wise, uh, he's fine. And if you can buy him for the dip, that's mm. probably a, a good call at this point. But for this year, I, I, I'm I'm out on him, and and he's one of my biggest fallers. Yeah, we'll just say from a dynasty perspective, I have zero issue. Like his value didn't change for me in dynasty. Uh, Nico Collins, Be, because of what you said about Diggs' contract and his age and. You know, how much of Stefan Diggs from last year and the year before where he really faded in the second half of those seasons, mm -hmm. how much of that's on him? How much of that's on the coaching staff or whatever or bad right. blood or I don't know, whatever. The Who thing knows? Is. Yeah, I will say I, I'm not even disagreeing or arguing about Nico Collins necessarily. I think it's just about this whole team is an interesting Rorschach test, I think, for people right now, because there's. Three guys that I think you could argue are the number one on the team. <laughs> you could argue Diggs. You could argue Collins. You could argue Tag Dell. Mm -hmm. And I'm open to arguments on every single one of them. And I could be swayed probably to any single one of them. Right. But in terms of like a fall, I think Stefan Diggs took a way harder fall this offseason. Because he went from a team, he's the absolute number one on that team with the Bills. And mm -hmm. now he comes over to this, like you said, very busy, cluttered depth chart of, I don't know, is he the one B? Hopefully, maybe for him. Nico Collins, at least from my perspective, I'm trying to isolate this because mm -hmm. I don't think everybody loses the same with this. But I think Nico Collins, you could look at it as, okay, yes, yeah, Stefan Diggs comes over. That's bad. But he is getting up there in age a little bit. Or is he replacing some of the spent guys that were there your robert woods mm -hmm. who was hanging around last year your noah brown who was well there good but when injured was was gone and also just everybody on this team is always injured so like how much do they just go we got to get our shit together like right. let's have somebody who's capable to fill in when the worst happens again this year i don't know so i'm holding out in the redraft this is going to be the litmus test so, like, right now, do you have an idea of which of those three you would target most in redraft right now? I mean, uh, let's say they're all taken around the same clump, the three of them. I would I would probably take Tank Dell. Mm. Uh, I just, I, I love him. Uh, I really became infatuated with him last year. Uh, I, I like what he does. I like that he popped as a rookie. Um, 
you know, building that chemistry with Stroud, both as rookies, they had that in common last year. Like they have that common bond. Um, so I think that that relationship is going to continue to grow. Uh, tank should come back from this injury, you know, no issues. Uh, so that's why I'd take tank and he's probably going to be the cheapest one out of all of them come yeah. draft season as well. So give me that discount as well. Uh, even if he's a little bit more boom bust this next year, say, um, just with the addition of digs, I will still take the booms over the bus because I think there's going to be a lot bigger booms that'll win you weeks and he will yeah. be busting you. We're in agreement on this one. You and I are both on team tank Dell All team right. tank for, for Rita. And to some extent it's because he does things that neither of the other two guys do. You'd mm-hmm. brought it up a little bit before. I actually think there's, there's some overlap with Nico and Stefan Diggs, and I'm sure they can utilize it. It'll be fine. Like Tank Dell, his stuff can't be replaced by the other two, but the inverse isn't necessarily right. true. So, yep. uh, yeah, I'm into it, you know, and I think recency bias too. He was injured at the tail end of the year, and people are probably just, you know, out of sight, out of mind with him. Mm-hmm. So I love it.